But see, the difference when you have a thousand people that absolutely love what you do for them, as opposed to a million people who like your show, it's kind of a difference. That thousand people, now you figure out, let's say you're a fitness brand. Now you say to yourself, what? This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but we need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today, to start turning your dreams into a reality. curiosity question is what's the difference between knowing something and understanding something but actually implementing that understanding into practice okay let me say that again what's the difference between knowing something and understanding something but actually implementing that idea into practice Okay, so let me set the tone. We live in a world where not just celebrities have brands anymore. Everyone that has a social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinstagram, or Pinstatrust, or whatever you call it nowadays, has a brand. A so-called story that everyone receives when they go on your profile. For example... When you go on Apple's website, you see simplistic, futuristic, beautiful. That brand is just coming out at you. And it's your choice whether or not you want to buy their story. So if you're kind of like curious about what I'm talking about, then this episode is for you. Because my guest today is a master at deciding not only helping and deciding those who want to create brands for themselves, but honestly, he is a guy who has changed the way I look at my life, changed the way of so many companies' lives, and changed the way that we look at ourselves. He's innovated the way we think about our brands. He's an author of critically acclaimed books such as The Business of Belief, and he's the creator of I Am Keats, a philosophy focused on transformation, a popular speaker. He lectures to corporations, associations, and university audiences around the world and works confidently with executives and management teams at a number of the top companies. So, without further ado, please give a huge warm welcome to the one and only Tom Asiker. Hey, Tom, man. (laughs) Hey, Logan. How you doing? Good. Good. Thank you so much for coming on, not just once, but uh, a second time. So <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, so looking forward to it. So, so the mission of the show is you uh, scratch your own itch, where uh, it's uh, taking a problem that you have, you know, with yourself, or maybe you had a problem with, um, with the way a company does something or the way people do something and you're trying to solve this problem so you turn it into a business what does that mean to you when you're trying to scratch your own itch (laughs) well uh, look 
I think that uh, scratching the itch is uh, important when you start a business, but it's also important to realize that if you want to be successful with that business, and I mean monetarily, then you have to scratch other people's itch as well. So if you start something and you really don't know whether people in the marketplace that you're trying to serve have an itch, if you just kind of imagine that they do, or if you would like them to have an itch, or, you know, I hear a lot of people say, people should do this. That's why I'm starting this business. Or people need this. That's why I'm starting this business. And those businesses are doomed to fail because there are so many products and services and brands of everything out there. Unless yours is speaking directly to the person that has the itch, that wants the itch to go away, you're going to be struggling. So just that that's like the key piece of advice I can give anyone out there is make sure you're actually taking care of somebody else's itch. <laughs> I love it. I love it because um, I think some people uh, have great intentions. You know, they're they're – they're trying to, for example, maybe uh, solve a, a very big problem with 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 people suffering, right? And so they uh, they have this hobby where they entertain people, and they go on YouTube and they make these awesome videos. And there might be some people that are are are, are going to get upset with this, but I'm just gonna say it that you know until you turn your YouTube videos that are funny into an actual profitable way of getting in life like it's not a business yet so um how does someone do that do you think someone that is is out there trying to entertain and, and actually deep down they're trying to end a little bit of someone's suffering because they just want to make people laugh uh, how does someone take and actually turn their youtube channel into a sort of brand and and be more strategic about the way they deliver their content yeah okay so let's let's use youtube and, and that youtube channel as an example so you have something that you're trying to provide people that you feel will scratch their itch so whether it's entertainment whether it's information whether it's a combination of entertainment and information whether it's news it doesn't matter what it is what you're hoping is that people are going to come to that channel. Either somebody's going to recommend that they go to it, they're going to see a clip of it somewhere. And so you're trying to grab their feelings, right? You want them to say in their mind very rapidly, oh, this looks like something I might be interested in. It's right? something that for me, this is something for me. Because that's how we make our, most of our decisions in the marketplace. People think we're making these rational decisions, but we're not. It's impossible. What we're doing is where our feelings convey something to us. Either approach this thing because there's something in it for you or avoid that thing because it's not this dangerous or it's a waste of time or whatever it is. That's it. So you draw them in with this feeling with something that says, okay, yeah, great. Now, and this is the tough part, because it's easy to get somebody to watch something once. Now you've got to figure out, how do I get them to come back to the next one? How do I do that? How do I keep them engaged? Right. So you don't just end your, your show or your news program or whatever it is and say, it was nice seeing you. Bye-bye. You either better collect some kind of email address so you can inform them that there's a new show coming. Have them subscribe to the channel so they get a notification. Let them know at the end of the first show what's coming up on the next show that's really exciting so that you pull them in again. And if you can do this over and over and over again, now you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the model? Is there Will people pay for this? Now, in general, it's not all media brands, but let's call that a media brand. In general... People don't pay for media. Uh, they have been hooked on this idea that it should be free and they'll tolerate the ads. 
So most YouTube channels have ads that are placed in there randomly by YouTube, some type of algorithm that places ads from all kinds of different companies onto the most popular platforms with the most viewers for particular subject matter. So you can go that direction, right? So that's one way, is ad supported. If you think that you are, you've got this audience that loves you so much that you can get rid of all these ads, let's say you have a million people watching this, and you decide, I don't want ads anymore. So now you have to ask yourself, knowing that the majority of people don't want to pay anything, you have to say to yourself, can I get 10,000 of those million people to just donate a couple of bucks a month or a buck a month? Because now you've got $10,000 a month coming in if you can get people to just give up a dollar a month. But as I mentioned earlier, the big, big thing I want people to realize is that you have to scratch an itch. And the second thing that you have to realize is people don't like to pay for anything. People are really, really strange in the ways that they make a certain type of value calculus. You know, like one thing, oh, yeah, that's absolutely worth $8. Oh, this, this newspaper with all of this work that went into it and all these people that write all these articles and all this photography and all of the printing and all that. No, I don't want to spend a dollar for that. So it's, it's really strange, but you need to understand it so that you don't get surprised when you go out there and start encountering how people really act and react in the marketplace. Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Wow, wow, that is uh, that's huge. My mind, I know my mind's a little blown right now just because of that uh, that great tip that you gave right just now was you got to get subscribers, you got to get true fans, and I think this is where a lot of um, possible uh, if you don't think of your yourself as a company yet, or you, you well you should and. Um, And also just companies overall, if they don't think of themselves as a sort of how can we create someone uh, and turn them into a true fan by making a habit out of the way they consume our products or services by getting subscribers, uh, then you're kind of missing the boat, I think, is what you're saying as far as what, what you just said just now. Well, yeah. And remember, I mean, this and, and, you know, I don't want people to be paranoid. But you have to understand that there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people trying to take those people's limited attention away from you. So let's say that you, you know, let's say that you listen to podcasts when you're driving and you've got this short list on, you know, on your phone that you listen to as you're driving. Let's say it's like a half a dozen. And then all of a sudden, one of these particular podcasts is not really engaging you anymore. It's not, it's starting to, you know, veer away from the subject matter or I I don't know, the audio quality is going down or whatever it happens to be. All of a sudden, your mind says, well, there's a couple hundred thousand podcasts out there. Let me try another one. So then you bring in this other one into your short list and you remove that one that for some reason didn't keep you fully engaged. And, and that's the tricky part about being a media brand is how do I keep people coming back and I don't lose them? You know, it, that's a hard thing to do. I mean, I used to watch Survivor. I remember when Survivor first came on years and years ago. 
I could not wait to watch this. I'd watch it with my daughter. We try to predict all, you know, who was going to win. And I mean, we watched it season after season after season. And then I don't remember what happened. But one particular season didn't really work. It didn't engage us. They tried to do something clever. I don't remember what they did. And so we tuned it out, watched something else. I've never gone back to that show. It's off of my radar screen, my mental radar screen. And I probably won't go back unless they can figure out how to drag me back in with something really enticing. So people are really finicky. They want, they want something that makes them comfortable, that they recognize. But on the other hand, they also want something different that excites them. So you've got this tension. How do you become something that, that they're familiar with that makes them comfortable and on the other hand, how do you create something that's different that prevents them from becoming bored with what it is? So it's, uh, that's probably one of the toughest brands in the world to not, not to not to launch and to have immediate success with, but to have ongoing success with a media brand is really difficult. Yeah, I so agree. And there's, I think so many people that are trying it just because they see it all the time. It is in their, you know, their world constantly. You go on Facebook and you see a new YouTube star. You go on uh, Instagram and you see another Instagram star or something like that. And they're they're utilizing what it is. It's media to try to gain someone's attention and give them uh, a few things: either education, give them entertainment, give them a way of doing a certain. Uh, act of fitness or act of, of business or act of, of um, uh, thought leadership, you know, they're motivating them, whatever right. it may be. And oftentimes I, I, I know for a fact it's hard to stand out from the rest. And so you are told things like, hey, just stay consistent. That will be successful. Do you believe in that as long as you're consistent? with something, uh, no matter what it is, do you think it will lead to success? Yeah. So it comes back down to what this definition of success is, right? So if you have, if you create in your mind that success means this huge number of people that, that are following me and watching my program, because now remember why, because you think you need that huge number in order to monetize the advertising, right? Because that's, that's how you make money. The larger the numbers you have, the more advertising dollars you get. So that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is I'm creating and providing value to people. And you're reaching out to these people, to the tens of people, 20, hundreds of people that are enjoying what you're doing. And you're finding out, how can I add more value? What more can I do for you? And you keep providing more and more value. And these people start trickling in new people. So now you're up to 1,000 people. But see, the difference when you have 1,000 people that absolutely love what you do for them, as opposed to a million people who like your show, it's kind of a difference. That 1,000 people... Now you figure out, let's say you're a fitness brand. Now you say to yourself, what more can I do for these thousand people that really believe in what I do, that really trust me, that I have their email addresses, I can engage with them, I can ask them questions. What more can I do? Now you start digging into what these people want and you start finding out things. Oh, you know, Logan, what we would really love is I can't find a decent protein powder with all, without all this artificial sweeteners and this and this and this. So you say to yourself, hmm, why can't I go find that particular brand and offer that to them as an additional product or service for what I do? Or why can't I go formulate my own protein blend, my own nutritional supplements and brand those and start offering – to the thousand people and oh oh I know maybe these thousand people I can sell them if they want wholesale and then they can resell it retail to other people so that they can make an extra few bucks 
there's just so many things you can do once you start thinking beyond you and what you want and you start thinking about these people that you're serving, trying to really dig deep into understanding what it is that they itch for, that you may be able to to be the person that provides it. Because today, having belief, having people's trust in you is the most important asset you can have because now you can go out and bring new things to them. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, So speaking of beliefs, you wrote a book called Business of Beliefs. On our last episode, we got an I am Keats, but dude, like you're, I mean, it's almost like a hundred pages. It's a very small, quick read. Business of Beliefs book is a absolute, I think, uh, Bible for anybody who's going into marketing. Like you, you should just read that book. It'll take you about an hour to read. Um, I mean, if you're a slow reader, it may take you three hours. You can listen to it on audiobook. It's a fast listen, and uh, it's got so many. It's almost written like a little bit of a. If you go on Medium and, and you take like fifteen articles and you just put them in a book, uh, they're a little blot. Like each chapter is just like a, a, almost a page and a half to two pages. I love how you formatted it. Um, let's talk about business of beliefs and why it's so important for anybody that's trying to build a brand. Yeah. Well, look, I wrote that book because I was working for very large organizations. I, I still do with, with big, big, well-known brands. And they were becoming frustrated because they couldn't understand why all of the information that we, they were providing to people were not motivating people to make decisions to choose them. And no matter how many times I tried to explain to people that human beings don't make decisions with information, they make decisions with their feelings and their, their information is used to back those feelings up. They, they just didn't get it. So I said, well, I'm going to have to write something to try to get this across because this, this, this understanding, okay, if people don't make decisions based on the information, then what is that concept called? It's called belief. People make decisions based on what they believe. And this believing mind is a strange kind of mixture of both your feelings and your thinking mind, right? It, it, you want, your beliefs want to identify with something or someone. You know, it, your beliefs understand life by creating a, like a cause and effect stories in your head. You know, you, you care about yourself, what's happening in your environment, why it's happening, how you appear to others, whether you're safe and in control. That's the creature that we are. We are not computers where we go out and we say, ah, I need this. Let me go Google it, make a list. OK, this is the best one based on the list. Let me have that. That's not how it works. If that's how it works, these big, big brands would never run any ads on TV showing Michael Jordan dunking a basketball or Tiger Woods putting a ball in a hole. What's that have to do with anything? That doesn't have anything to do with when you hit the ball, what it's going to do, because it's going to end up going into the woods one way or the other. But you pay more money for it because you saw Tiger Woods win the championship by hitting the little ball this particular ball in a hole. That's how weird the human brain is. So if that's true, you have a choice. Accept that the human mind and how it makes decisions is weird and appeal to that weirdness so that you, you succeed and make people happy or get frustrated and say, I can't understand what's wrong with people. We've got the best this, the best that. How come they're not reading the information and making the right decisions? Those are your two choices. Get frustrated and and not succeed or embrace the madness of how people make decisions and be successful in the marketplace. Hey, friends. So let me ask you real quick. Are you someone who's trying to get more visibility? Who's trying to be in front of the crowd? Well, if that's you. I want to let you know that, first of all, you're not alone. Second of all, 
If you want to get on more podcasts, or ones that actually scratch your own itch, meaning maybe you have a book, or a business, or maybe you do speaking, or if you don't yet do speaking, maybe you can, and maybe you'd love to. Well, I put something together for you, and in this little giveaway, I'm going to show you how to pitch yourself or podcast and how to actually be professional when you show up so you can be the next authority in your niche so you can start scratching your own itch. I know what it's like to build something, create something, and then there just be crickets. No one wants that. You need to be seen. You need to be heard because you have a message to share, a message that is worthy of hearing. Podcasts nowadays, more than ever, are being consumed by people. And guess who's actually learning the knowledge that's being shared? It's podcast listeners. It gives you a license to be an authority in whatever area you really dream of being an authority in. So if this at all starts to give you a little itch to scratch, just email logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com. Oh, man, that is, I oh, oh, I think it's just so much gold for anyone who's not heard this before, uh, what you just said. I know when I first went through your book and I was like, geez my mind was blown it was like i was it was kind of like seeing the movie the matrix where you're just like <laughs> you, you you'd feel like you just took the red pill and you finally uh you finally woke yourself up and you, you finally allowed yourself to go hey i'm not gonna just do what everyone else tells me to do like um and then read more how-to manuals on how to actually gain success but just start doing things and taking action and realizing that beliefs are based off of, you know, you can't always make someone remember what you said, but you can always make someone remember the way you made them feel. And so um, I want to go into, though, having some some fun learning about you, Tom, for a little bit more for the next five to ten minutes. And I uh, want to enter the scratching the surface curiosity questions where it'll make someone feel less alone. We'll have some fun with entertainment and some improv. And uh, we'll also do a little <laughs> bit of, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, learning. What did I say? Learning about you and then making someone feel less alone and then doing some improv. So whenever you're All ready, right. man. Go ahead. <laughs> Sweet. Um, all right. First uh, question. Sort of a giving's giving question. Uh, what's a thought that you recently had, Tom, about yourself or maybe about someone else that you felt embarrassed or ashamed about having? A thought that I had about myself or someone else that I was embarrassed with having. Well, most most of the thoughts that embarrass me. Uh, and when I say embarrass, I make I, I re- reframe it as kind of make me feel bad. But when I find myself judging other people's behaviors or things that they say, I, I often reflect back on that, and I feel really bad because what I'm doing is I'm judging them based on how I want them to be. Whether it's whether what's something going on in my environment and I want them to be a certain way in that environment, whether they're talking to me on the phone and I want them to say certain things that make me feel better about my ability to get my information across to them. So anytime I catch myself and I've caught myself in the past week a handful of times judging other people. You know, either their intentions, their intelligence, their caring, whatever it was, that really that really bothers me when I catch myself doing that because that means I I'm, I still haven't completely stepped out of this story that I'm in that makes me think I'm important and I'm special. 
And I know that I'm nothing. I'm just like everyone else. So that, that would be the, I don't have a specific example, but that's usually when I feel bad. Oh man, I still love it. I'll take it. I'll take it for what it is. Um, <laughs> absolutely, because gosh dang it, I think you're special, man. And uh, like uh, every single time, I'm I'm no joke, and I'm no joking. I'm not like trying to pull your leg or or try to lift you up when I say this. But whenever I'm confused and I just don't know what the heck I'm doing anymore, and I feel like, all right, what am I doing with my life? I go back to an interview that you did. I go back to a, the audio book of I Am Keats or the Business of Belief, and I just consume those, and nine times out of ten, I'm put back on track. And so, in my eyes, man, you're absolutely uh, a, a point oh 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 uh, one percent. Um, well, look, different. well, look, look, thank you. And listen, if you want to feel good about your, about your life, I'll tell you, I have to go back and put myself back on track often. This is the kind of journey it is to be, you know, a human being that's growing and changing. You often get these confusing points in your life and you have to pause and you have to go back and you have to remember the essence of what your philosophies and your beliefs and your values are. And then you let go of what happened and you move forward again. That's called living. Ah, man, that is... um. That is a philosophy that I wish was written on more school uh, billboards, honestly, for the youngsters, just to know that, hey, when you're confused, like straight up, you are not alone. And so many people, they feel like uh, they listen to a podcast or they see someone's YouTube channel or they go on Instagram or Facebook or some other social media and they see that everyone's got it all put together except for me. Why am I this guy? doesn't have anything yep. put together. Um, so thanks for I, – I didn't mean for this little uh, ramble to go on, but I think this is a solid portion <laughs> of what's going on. Uh, the next question I'd love to ask you is, um, Tom, if you could uh, meet anybody and interview them, who would it be and why? You would mean alive or of all times? <laughs> yeah, uh, I would say of all times just because – the the people that are living nowadays, um, sometimes their art isn't recognized until they're dead, for example, for some yeah. reason. God, I don't know. I mean, there have been so many great people uh, who've lived, who've been on the earth. Uh, I mean, I would, I would love to just go for a walk with this guy, Jesus. And just listen to him talk to try to understand how he moved people, how he moved these people with his words, with, with his with his passion, with his convictions. Uh, I mean, you know, you're talking about a, a revolutionary human being that changed a small group of people and put so much passion into them that they changed you know, millions of people's thinking. That to me is, uh, that's kind of unbelievable. So I, I would love to just experience that. Yeah, talk about a, well, even though uh, some people might get mad if I say this, but talk about a true celebrity, Jesus. I mean, the yeah. most famous brand, brand. There is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen, and this is, and this is the interesting thing. Other people turned him into a brand, not him. And I think that that's something that that we should learn from is stay true to who you are and stay passionate about what you do. And if your greatness emerges, other people will turn you into the brand. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, 100 percent. I mean. If Steve Jobs said it like in his in his commencement speech that he did for Stanford. You can't connect the dots going forwards. You can only connect them going backwards. Exactly. And, and what he made sense though out of it was this sort of uh, this sort of ooh, he didn't he didn't realize that Apple was going to stand for what it did when he started it so meaning like it, it now apple's used as, as the sort of uh 
I would say, most simplistic, most, uh, like I said in the very beginning, most innovative, most futuristic sort of lifestyle that you gain from just being a consumer. And he, there was this, this there, there was no, like, brand around it. It was just, they were making products that were, um, that were, that were easy to, to, to use. And, and that was the only thing that he wanted to do. And so, um, yeah, anyways, I, I, I want to ask you though, real quick is, is this sort of, what do you think a lot of, uh, entrepreneurs nowadays are really, 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 um, struggling with as far as just getting out and separating themselves um, rather than actually just doing the work because I think sometimes like a lot of entrepreneurs this sort of like uh, quote unquote new uh new aged I would say uh actor like everyone's an entrepreneur everyone's an actor um mm. you know why do why do so many of us struggle with trying to stand out is it because we're just trying to copy everybody else or is it because um it's just hard to stand out well, I mean, this is a, I think for two reasons. The first is, I don't think, and, and if you're listening to this and you're one of these people, I, I apologize in advance for saying it, but I think there are too many people starting businesses because they think that it's something that they want to do in order to become independent and make a lot of money. That is not a reason for doing this. If you do that for that reason, you are going to burn out. Not only are you going to burn out, but you're not going to ever light anybody's life up so that they buy it, share it, talk about it. Because people can feel whether in whether in whether in for what you're doing, the people you're serving or not. So if you start something because you say, I absolutely hate this about how this works in the world, and I think a lot of people hate how this works in the world, and I'm going to go out and do something to make this better and to fix this thing. And if you're really passionate about that, you'll come across in everything that you do in a passionate way. You'll talk about it passionately. You will want to get out and, and spread the word because that's how much you believe in what you're doing. And because of that, other people will buy into it and they'll try it and they'll feel the passion that you put into it. But if you're just doing something because, hey, you know, uh, I want to start a business. This sounds like an easy business to do. It's not going to cost me a lot of money. I can probably make you know, a decent living. Let me go do that. People can feel it. So when you go out there and you, and you try to sell this to other people, sell your idea or whatever it is, there won't be any energy behind it because you're just doing what everybody else is doing. You need to go out and find out what the hell is the problem? What are people aggravated about? How can you do something to improve it? And then go out there and be passionate about spreading the word. And that's how you bring that to life. Hey, are you a coach or an author or a speaker? If this is you, then I want you to check out conveyor.com. It's a micro learning platform in which you can create courses, challenges, and assessments and polls. Gather data or maybe make a course out of your incredible authority and thought leadership that you serve your peoples. So if you're someone who is saying things over and over again, and you find yourself going, wow, okay, well, I wish I could systematize this or create a course out of it. Conveyor.com allows you to send text messages to people every single day with a little question or assessment, or maybe a new test that they can use to learn a certain subject. So check out conveyor.com. 
Man, I am I am so so happy I asked that question. I was very scared about asking that question, honestly, um, <laughs> just because I'm sure some people might be pissed off, or I know that for a fact uh, there is more noise about becoming an entrepreneur and becoming uh, financially independent than anything else right now because it does sound pretty cool. I mean, freedom, right? Flexibility yeah. to do whatever you want, like. What are you really, then I got to ask, like, what are you really being tied down to? If there's this freedom, like, what's, what are you caged in? I mean, really, you're not. And I, right. I love, though, that you said just now, that I have to reiterate, if there's a deep, 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 deep angst in something that, that, is, that is going to drive you, yeah, I mean, there's passionate behind it. there's passion behind it there's this emphaticness there's this sort of anger this is this non-stop this obsession that's why people that look up to disney and look up to picasso and look up to um so many of the great of the greatest artists out there it wasn't that they were doing it because they watched a lot of motivational videos and they're like heck um this is uh this is really cool i gotta try this out it was more so heck I can't go to sleep unless I get this done. Right. <laughs> and so thank you so much, Tom, for saying that. Um, you cool. <laughs> I just want to ask two more questions, and then we'll leave it out if you're All right. cool with that. Awesome. So the the second to last question is, anyone that's listening to this right now, how can they support Tom Asiger and uh, whatever endeavors he's into or maybe uh, support them by giving them a, a homework assignment and actually completing this homework assignment, whatever it may be. Oh, boy. Well, see, this is interesting. I, I, the only way you can support with, support me is to, is to dance with me, right? So if, if you're interested in growing a business and growing a brand and understanding how people make decisions in the marketplace – Go buy the business of belief, you know, uh, go to Amazon, find it, read it. If you have questions, email me. I always answer all my emails. If you're on this personal transformation journey, if you're wondering where you are in life, where you want to go next, if you're feeling a little stuck, go buy I Am Keats, uh, K-E-A-T-S. You'll find that at Amazon as well. Read it. Interact with me. The way that people support me is by talking to me, by interacting with me, by giving me more information about how I can improve what I'm doing so that other people can improve what they're doing and we all improve and our lives improve together. So that, that would be the best way for me. Yeah, Tom is by far one of the best responders as far as emails goes. I mean, this guy is on it. So, yeah, reach out to him. Please do. I did not make this podcast just for it to be a podcast where you listen to it and then you go, oh, I'm going to hit next because I just got to fill my brain with something. And, you know, I'm on this long car ride or I'm working out right now and I'm just going to. No, please do yourself a favor. If anything that you heard that Tom said today that resonated with you, I'm going to put it in the show notes how you can contact him. And please do. I mean, either either one. If you want to dance with them, buy Business of Beliefs. If you want to really find this transformation inside yourself and you're just confused, the I am Keats uh, sort of Coleridge versus Keats philosophy, when you dig into it, it will allow you to start seeing things a little bit more clearly. And actually, I'm going to say a lot more clearly. Like, like I said earlier, whenever you're confused, you go back to that book and life just makes a lot more sense. Uh, but anyways, the last question, Tom, I'd like to ask is, um, is there anything that you wish that I asked you, man, or anything that you want to leave off? Uh, the floor <laughs> is yours. No. Look, I um... – Usually anything I have to say, I write down. So either in my books or I'm working on a um, – I'm, a lot of people have read the little book, I Am Keats, and there have been a lot of questions from people uh, and they, a lot of people asking me to, to dig in deeper, to explain more. 
So I'm working on a an online video learning program. It should be available in the summer. And I'm going to try to, I've got about six hours right now uh, of programming. There's probably some more to come. But um, no, I, I don't have anything I want to say. I just, like I said, the, the best that people could do for me is to just keep telling me what it is that's bothering them, what they need to live their best lives and most, most you know, fulfilling and meaningful lives. The more I understand what is preventing people from doing that, because I know what's preventing them, it's their minds, but I need to hear from them what it is that they think it is so I can understand how their minds are working so that I can figure out how to help them tune that part out and tune in all of the amazing energy and potential that everyone in the world has. Man, that is huge. Oh, that is enormous. I love it. I, I can't wait to take this course, honestly. Um, <laughs> personally, I think it's going to be a great course uh, just because based off of that book and it blowing my mind. Um, yeah, people, and, and you're not a bad person. If you have more questions, it's good. It means you're, <laughs> you're inquisitive. So... I'm happy people are asking you more questions about that. Um, Ask away. That's. I, I mean, this is how. This is the thing we have to do more of today, as a culture, is stop arguing with each other, stop tweeting negative things to each other, and let's try to understand each other a little better. Let's ask each other more questions, and let's be more curious and compassionate with each other. And if we do that together. We'll come up with creative ways of improving everyone's life. You know, there's an abundance, abundance of anything you can look for in the world to improve each other's lives. The only thing that's stopping us is our own ability to understand each other and to be compassionate and creative in the process. So that's what I'm hoping to do with everything that I'm working on. 100%. Thank you so much for saying that because the thing is we have a bunch of talk shows right now but why don't we have any listen shows yeah, exactly you know it's like we have a bunch of those let's make some listen shows out of all these people that are arguing on twitter facebook and instagram and i'm not trying to make a world of just like happy go lucky and i don't think you are either tom <laughs> of like people that just agree with everybody but i think the, the understanding is a uh, very that's what our that's what our minds were built for is to understand and to then put into practice. But hey, that's just gold, Tom. Thank you so much again for coming on. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to to keep in touch and and promote the heck out of your course when it comes out. And also, um, anybody that's listening to this, like I said, please get a hold of Tom. He's the man. All right, man. Thank you, Logan. I've had a great time. Likewise. <laughs> All right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day either made me feel less alone, maybe put a smile on my face, made me laugh, made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is 
right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help. And I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.